In this video, we're going to talk about boron uh, trifluoride, and we're going to ask ourselves, is this molecule polar or is it nonpolar? And first, uh, to, to, to get this idea, we must be comfortable drawing the Lewis structure. So we know that we have a boron and we have uh, three fluorine atoms. We have a boron and we have uh, three fluorine atoms. So now we know from the periodic table, boron has three electrons, and we know from the periodic table, fluorine is a halogen, so it has seven valence electrons. So the total number of electrons we have to place would be three times seven, which would be 21, plus three, which would be 24 electrons total. Now we say usually, uh, uh, when John Lewis structures, the atom to the, the furthest to the left in a molecular form is usually a central atom. All right? Uh, so a boron, in this case, would be a central atom. I'm going to place uh, three uh, pairs, uh, I'm sorry, three fluorine atoms around my boron atom, and then I'm going to start joining my Lewis structure, All right? So I usually start from the bottom up, or that, what that means simply means that I start with single bonds, and then I move up to double or triple if needed, All right? So in this case, I could form a single bond between the boron and fluorine. I could also do the same here, and I also could do the same here. Now, you have to keep in mind that boron is a special atom in that it will never satisfy the octet rule simply because it has only three pairs of electrons. And so therefore, at this point, boron's shell, in terms of its electrons, is actually maxed out. So we cannot place any more electrons around boron. Fluorine, on the other hand, must satisfy the octet rule. And at this point, we only have two electrons around each fluorine. So the only other way for us to fulfill or Lewis structure is actually to place electrons on fluorine in the form of fluorine pairs. All right, so this becomes two, four, I'm sorry, this becomes two, four, and six. And remember, we have this single bond that makes eight. So the octet for fluorine is satisfied on, on the right side. I could also satisfy this uh, fluorine's octet by doing the same thing. And I also do, could do the same thing by placing three pairs of lone pairs on the top fluorine atom. Now, so if you do the electron count, you could see that each fluorine's octet is satisfied. And uh, we uh, boron is satisfied because it has a total of six electrons, simply because it can only form three bonds. And so we get a two, four, six, eight. Um, and so three times eight will be 24. So we have the total number of electrons that uh, we should have, all right? So if you're unsure, you could just uh, run through the count and you'll see that this all equals to 24 electrons. Now to determine if the molecule is polar or not, and this, by the way, is what we call a trigonal planar shape, because this is actually the shape of the molecule, we draw what we call dipole moments. So we know that boron is less electronegative than fluorine. In other words, fluorine is more electronegative than, than boron. So we know that fluorine should essentially be hogging the electrons. Right? So we know that boron will gain a net positive charge. Right? We also can do the same thing for here. Right? We'll draw a dipole moment. Fluorine is more electronegative, so the arrow is going to be pointed to fluorine, whereas boron is going to be uh, get, having a net positive uh, charge. We also could do the same thing uh, for uh, this fluorine. Now, I want you to notice something here. Because the molecule is flat, it is actually symmetrical. And so, what is the net dipole moment? Well, if you remember, if I have a dipole going in, in this way, and I have a dipole going in this way, if I add my dipoles, my net should be going straight down the middle, right? So this is the net addition of both of these. Right? So why do I say that? Because the net dipole uh, for the two bottom fluorines will be in this direction, right? And what do we see here? we actually see that the dipoles are going tail to tail. And this just simply means that we have a net zero a dipole moment. So in other words, boron trifluoride is actually a nonpolar molecule. And the reason being is because the molecule is uh, symmetrical. Right? So there's no net dipole moment. Right? So just please remember, you add your dipole moments, the addition of any dipole moment like this would be straight down uh, the middle, right? And it's the same thing if I pointed the dipoles upwards. Right? The net addition would be straight up the middle, right? So in other words, boron trifluoride is a nonpolar molecule simply because 
the net dipole moment is zero. They all come to cancel each other out. And this is because the, the molecule is asymmetrical. Now, you actually don't really appreciate uh, this, uh, this, this non-polarity if you actually draw the molecule in. In, in 2D. So what do I mean? Uh, if you drew if you draw the molecule like this, then you actually do not get to actually appreciate uh, the fact that the molecule is nonpolar. And so this is the reason why boron trifluoride is nonpolar.